I'm going to wrap circles around you. I will wrap circles around you. I'm going to wrap circles around you. I will wrap circles around you. I'm going to wrap circles around you. I'm going to wrap circles around you. I will wrap circles around you. I'm going to wrap circles around you. The bond on the beat or net and the switch and squeeze. That's mess of that too, just to be complete. Hit on the grill, okay, nigga. Get the beat from your face blast. Oh, really, though, get your tail out in the cat city, rap city, ho. You can spit fast, people know that you're slow. Saying you're right, and we know that you won't, and we know that you don't. Yo, keep your back still. They accent up a back still. Beat them rats, Set them in the trash still. You ain't simply me question why you act ill. We not in store. Tell me how you snack deals. But I know cause your prices is lower. They offer me more for the nicest to show up. I top of your shit like the April that go up. But nigga, you know what? Yo, hold up. People be wildin' and blind on my town. If you act like you don't hear this fire, you are nobody but a well-known liar. You talk too much, keep the jail phones tight up. I know your family's a well-known fighters. Hold there with no good. They spread that virus in the pandemic. You ain't had a plan in it. Damn, now you're scamming it. This beat. Come across, examine it, and relay that. All my niggas spray with it on streets. I'ma take my stance on it and Make sure that everybody stands on it. You off in it. I'm what they really want in this. I'm who they choose and you who they often get. It's up to me. I would just dispute the shit. We shoot the shit and figure out what cool to get. Yo, I gotta come and get it to the end with the flow. Yellow head to high. Kill it with it, no. Put your plant in the window, let it grow. Dealt with a little bit of pain in the low. Yo, some shit will break you. I would rather break through my verses. Take one, my hat, let's take two. Working on the EP, I have a minute take two. Left shit you can relate to. Raps is surplus, why you make do? Raps amazing, now I hate two. Raps the circus trying to cage you. These raps is running in and out the same crew. Yo, Laurent is a dog. My hand on the Quran and them off whites can't stand in them on my exit. Reps it, even in Texas. I don't need no more fucking necklace. Like the Ron on the track, yours more than just he say. My first week, I need it like a Jordan release day. He say, she say, she's taking each day. Bring that motherfucking verse saying, yo, the Ron on the track, yours more than just he say. My first week, I need it like a Jordan release day. He say, she say, she's taking each day. Bring that motherfucking verse saying, I will wrap circles around you. I'm going wrap circles around you. I will wrap circles around you. I'm going wrap circles on you. Yo, I got it from beginning to the end with the flow, yellow head tie. Feel it with it. No, I got it from beginning to the end with the flow, you're the head tied. Feel it with the nose out. Exit. Fix. Laurent. That's me. Yeah. Let's go. I'ma be the best me, it's all I gotta do. I'ma be the best me, I deserve the best things. I don't need no sympathy, people gonna remember me. When they bet against me, the people gonna lose. I'ma be the best me, but what I gotta prove. I'ma be the best me, you deserve the best things. Call before your jet leaves, all the ones in memory. We could build your energy, yo, we send out yo, the energy. Yo, I face myself in verses, they just okay with verses. I want the best me, so I figured that. I create the version with all tires, y'all liars and them lanes just swerving. My word play be perfect placement. I know it makes you nervous. Couldn't pay my mom's back, even with the latest purses. You pray the way them curses. All them days you stayed in churches. Your little boys, I know you hated how we played the cursing. That rap music drawn fluence in their places purpose. Enriched our lives, never basic when these raps will surface. I know how to rank you for it. I love you and I thank you for it. Mommy, you give a shit last. I'm putting you first. I'm sorry for the things we did that cause you to hurt it go i'ma be the best me is all i gotta do i'ma be the best me i deserve the best things i don't need no sympathy people won't remember me when they bet against me then people gonna lose i'ma be the best me but what i gotta prove i'ma be the best me you deserve the best things all before your jet leaves all the ones in memory we could build your energy yo, send out yo, your yo. yo a cross possession but not picture perfect i give advice so for our moves because I think you're worth it. I'm flawed like your name and I write it out in cursive. I know my angels lurking, even if I intend your surface. I'll be complete my purpose. Keep me safe from them jealous ones that can't tell us none. Haters be like them broke hitters that dirt weed who can't sell us none. Rap game, everybody wanna deal with the hell is this? A sell something? The way they ride them waves gonna mess around and get a sale or something. Defeating all my weaknesses, I don't even know what weak it is, but the best is yet to come. I know it's hard for you to see a bitch. The hurt and loss and drama is still strengthening up my arm. It's still people wishing me bad. I know they still getting that karma. Listen, I'ma be the best me is all I gotta do. I'm coming for everything. I put that on everything. You deserve the better things. I deserve the better things. When they go against us, then people gonna lose. I'ma be the best me is all I gotta do. I'ma be the best me. I deserve the best things. I don't need no sympathy. People gonna remember me 
Yeah, when they bet against me, them people gonna lose. I'ma be the best me, but what I gotta prove? I'ma be the best me. You deserve the best things. Yeah. Call before your jet leaves. All the ones in memory. You can feel your energy. We send the love to you. I'ma be the best me. Is all I gotta do. Let's do one more. Yo, I'm gonna tell these tracks in my right or wrong with a freestyle or write a song. Hit your keypad and the dial home. You can not reach him. I'm out just on assholes running next to you assholes. Full tight and you fucking with my cash flow. Got my dollars and my cents. I repent it's intense. It's expensive. If you flinch, I'm a ruler trying to end. This world can't break me down. Y'all can't take me down. I drop the shit, shake the ground. You gotta go. This world can't break me down. Y'all can't take me down. I drop the shit and shake the ground. Yo, if I'm a copyright, take me down. A copyright, take me down. You copyright, take me down. I drop the shit, shake the ground. I drop the shit, shake the ground. Take me down. Take me down. Yo. Your whole wide open, any tips you gonna take, they gonna tell everybody how your hips is gonna shake. So fuck if you've been around the block, if you've been around the block, I wanna know how many trips do it take. My lyrical repertoire shining these records hard, so when it's time to show and prove, it's understood you a pay, play, stay, way. They know what they got at stake. This world can't break me down, y'all can't take me down. I drop this shit, shake the ground, you gotta go. This world can't break me down, y'all can't take me down. I drop this shit, shake the ground. Yo, if I'm a copyright, take me down. A copyright, take me down. You copyright, take me down. I drop the ship, shake the ground. I drop the ship, shake the ground. Take me down. Take me down. Yo. I got rounds a day more than 30 weeks while you itching and bitching up on them dirty sheets. Competition be glitching, not fucking with me. I'm really something to be. I straight something to be. The cherry on top is behind the scenes. I get the video shot and give you something to see. They talk down, I'll up on my feet. What? Shit, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. This world can't break me down. Y'all can't take me down. I drop this shit, shake the ground. You gotta go. This world can't break me down. Y'all can't take me down. I drop this shit, shake the ground. Yo, if I'm a copyright, Take me down, a copyright, take me down, you copyright, take me down. I drop the shit, shake the what? I drop the shit, shake the ground. What? Take me down, what? take me down, yo. LeBron on the track, yo, it's more than just he saying. My first week, I need it like a Jordan release date. I need the whole radio talking. I need my niggas up north, steady on their radio walk. Man, that's me till I'm up in the court. And that's me spin crack, they be trying to cork. And I see my beat, they lose their they boss. If I drop when you drop your CD, it's sauce, kid. I'm one of the best. If you need to summon the rest, they try angles like that old school brand. You gotta guess. Yes. Shit. The fuck would you settle for less? This world can't break me down. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. It's late, so I'm like, let me just play some music because I don't know how many people go, oh, I just locked my damn iPhone. Anyway, I'm currently writing as we speak, but your conviction is hella inspiring. What you writing? So let's go. Let's get into let's get into it because it's a few topics that I want to touch. So let me break this up. Um, hold on a second. Matter of fact, what what beat are you writing to? Align my chakras with that one. What with the best me? Yeah, so what are y'all up to? It's 30 people in here. What time is it? It's 206. I mean it's 306 on the it's 306 on the East Coast, which means that it is one, it's 12 o'clock in California. So yeah. Um, I hope all of y'all are doing well. I just wanted to come and really just do some topics uh really quick. Why are you up so late? Because I'm off tomorrow. Mm. I use my floating holiday, so I'm good. I'm off and um What's up, Laron? I wish you played Here We Go. Yeah, I'm kind of over that, though. You like Here We Go still? Oh, I just locked my phone again. It's locked for five minutes. It was. It's not meant to be. Let's move on. Listen, this is your boy, Laron, potent pondering. I'm back with another video. Please come in and thumbs up this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification. Hit all notifications so you have my videos in your possession each and every time that I go live or I do uploads. You know, I'm kind of like... The thing about it is the real talk about the songs like voicemail and here we go. Those songs was written like years ago and I just put them out. So here we go is kind of more like pop. And I was kind of like nervous on putting it out. The real talk of it all is that like, you know, growing up and like my brothers being so hip hop or whatever. When I wrote that song, it was outside of the scope of like songs that I typically do. So I was kind of nervous about putting it out. So it took me like five years to put that song out. When I put it out, everybody loved it. Like that's one of my most. So. On my on my Spotify, my most streamed song is voicemail. That got over a hundred thousand streams. Here we go is kind of no, here we 
Best Me is the next most played. I got like 45,000 streams. And then Here We Go got like 25,000 streams. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, let me move on. So, yeah, I'm back with another video. Come in, subscribe, all of that. I wanted to, I'm trying to figure out where do I want to go first. Like, I don't know if y'all familiar with this with this lady. I've been playing some of her um her videos like on my on my YouTube, not my YouTube, my Instagram. If you follow me over there, but it's this um the mayor of of Dalton. It's a town in uh Chicago, Dalton, and she's a black mayor. And yo, when I tell you, it's so much scandal following this lady right now. But it's so interesting because like to me, like I think what it is for me is that being raised by a single mom even though you know my dad was there like i like to see women especially if they doing it in a conductive way running stuff but this lady has so much controversy from yo she is so much controversy following this mayor and they want her out and it's like it goes from for, for one she upped her salary um she hires people uh without them even being qualified and giving them salary boosts and all of that too. Let me bring this over so I, so um y'all can see it clearly. Did I do this right? Yeah. So why do I got the Streamyard thing up there? I don't want that on there. <sighs> um, you want the Epic Club up for you? Yeah. You know I like that beat, but it's just not for me. You know I might. I, I'm saying maybe I just never applied uh to it, applied myself to it, but. And I don't really like to like if a beat calls me to do it, I'll do it. The only reason why I did the um the everybody beat is because somebody asked me to do that, you know. So that's the only reason why I did it. You said she's a thug, but yo, so listen, let's play this. But yo, this woman is so arrogant. Just the stuff that she be saying, it's like she be having me thrown for the loop. Matter of fact, let me just give you a little taste of it. Let me go to my um Instagram real quick so y'all could just kind of see before I play this. But people just have a they have an issue with her attitude. Hold on. Well, I can't see my story. Oh, I got to go to my, hold on. Let me go to my page. Um, Give me a second. Let me share this. Wait. Share this. Damn, stop me. Get I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet. The mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing. That only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work. No work. Mm. What is that? No comment. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all. Can I tell you something? This page that I tagged, right? Shout out to African Dysphora, um, uh, Diaspora News, right? They play this. When I tell you, you see where I got this from? This is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get I am the leader. They want Yo, the guy who run that page, he plays that video every day for the daily devotional. And yo, when I seen it the first time, it had me dying. It had me dying because, see, I implore you outside of like this, like um, celebrity stuff and like female rap culture, get your mind into different news and stuff. Because I'm telling you, for the past few months, I've been hearing about this lady just watching videos and stuff. I'm like, I can't believe she like this. And listen, it's so hard for me to say it because typically like I root for black women. But if she's doing what they say that she that she's doing, she hired an offender, somebody who does code enforcement, who got to go into people's houses. And he was an offender. He did not pass like background check. She still hired him. That's putting people in risk. It's a whole lot like um, impacting people's businesses and things like that. But let me just play this for you so we could move on so you could get a gist of what I'm about to go into. I want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet, the mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work. Mm. What is that? No comment. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all self. Megan gave it to them. Megan, she Megan started that. You have to give respect. You guys want respect? Y'all have to give. I am your leader. I am the one that won by 82%. I am the one that carry you, trustee Jason House, you and a belcher that never wins anything over the hump. That's why you guys have your seats that you have before you. So when you get in these board meetings and you act a fool, y'all should stop. Because at the end of the day, all we've been doing, everybody is fighting since I became mayor. If y'all want to be leaders, y'all got to act like y'all know y'all not lead. Y'all follow. Stop. Yo, that's hold on, hold on. That is crazy. So let's go back over here. 
So they had a town meeting the other day in um, Dalton and this woman, you know, uh, let's just play this so you can check it out. Let me see how it looks on the screen because I want you to get the full glimpse of this. Give me a second. Fly inside a packed village hall in South Suburban Dalton, residents confronting embattled Mayor Tiffany Henyard. They say they want answers about Henyard, an unnamed village trustee, and a controversial trip to Las Vegas last May. NBC 5's Regina Waldrop in Dalton tonight with the story. She's spending the company's money. They buying all types of luxury. You know how like the rappers be hopping out, the hop, popping out of those. What's the truck that they use? Is it Tahoe's or she got? They bought one of those trucks on the on the um the 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 town's money, uh, just all types of stuff, trips, buying hair. She do all types. And listen, this is before I play this, right? She was on Roland, La on Roland, Roland Martin, right? He asked her about her foundation. If she had a foundation that was like, you know, um, some sort of like breast cancer foundation or whatever, right? She lied about it, but then she admitted it later in some other audio. And it's like, she just turned out to be a blatant liar. And I'm like, damn, you know what sucks? It seems like, like I told y'all before, every person that's in power seems like they corrupt just a little bit. And it hurts for me. It hurts when it's black people, because it's like, damn, you already know they don't want us to have these positions. And you get in here and you just run it amok like this. Come on. So let's play this. It was a packed village board meeting, but there were still people outside who could not get in. They were banging on doors, windows, chanting. And with that in mind, four trustees abruptly walked out and this meeting was adjourned. I'm still speaking. You're out of order, clerk. you out of order. In Dalton Monday night, a chaotic village board meeting. It got underway an hour late because of a credible threat, according to police. Only a limited number of residents were let into the building, and they had to pass through a metal detector. Those who were not let in protested outside. A short time later, the meeting abruptly ended when four trustees walked out. The uh, Open Meetings Act requires that the uh, that we have enough space for everybody to get in. Uh, because of that, I feel we have a lot of outrage going on out there, and we wanted to be able to provide the space to people that they are looking for. This is the residents' home. Anytime you can't come in, it's a problem. During public comment, a number of residents outraged because of the alleged misuse of village funds, lawsuits, and other issues called on the mayor to step down. We don't want you here. You are your administration. Y'all need to go. Mayor, you might as well step down, too, you know, because I'm tired of that, too. You know, this is a disgrace that you have done to this village. Oh, my God. If you're an online reseller, listen up. You're listing items online. In battle, Dalton Mayor Tiffany Hanyard and a village trustee who's not named are at the center of an investigation by the Illinois Department of Human Rights. And I do believe she wants to, in her mind, she pays for security. Like she has a full on security, like uh, like a security task task force that's with her. Um, I was listening to this other kid's channel. He got really good uh, coverage and commentary like on a lot of things. But he was saying like a lot of people saying that they believe in her mind she's a celebrity. And she's, this is a different role than, like, she's a supervisor over, is it Shelton? I don't want to say the city wrong. Is it Shelton? She's a supervisor over one city and she's a mayor of Dalton. But it's like, and I do believe that she, she she's on a power trip. They said she was never like this before. Like, you seen when I opened it up, she was just like, you're out of order. Like, I find, listen, I'm a little silly, so I find it a little funny. But at the end of the day, it's still wrong, though. The probe is focused on what allegedly happened on an economic development trip to Las Vegas last May. Henyard's former assistant who filed this complaint claimed she was sexually assaulted by an unnamed Dalton trustee on that trip. She claimed she was then later fired from her job. In a statement, the village told NBC5 it conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations led by an independent third party company. The statement goes on to say this is nothing more than a disgruntled village employee trying to make off with the taxpayers' hard earned dollars. Now, the village board meeting continued on for a little while with only the mayor and one trustee in attendance. Uh, April 8th, that's when they hope this meeting will resume. Reporting from Dalton, I'm Regina Waldrop, NBC5 News. Regina, thank you. I am a wife. I'm a mother of three children. My children and my family are suffering because of this loss. And Dalton police, the detectives, have been sitting around twiddling their fingers on this case. This is hurtful. When I've been in contact, I've been asking questions. I've been in contact with the state's attorney's office. I'm pushing this case. I've had the Crime Stoppers come out. 
to do additional work canvassing the neighborhood to assist the police and nothing had been done. My husband, Tavares Edward Davis, deserves justice. Thank you. Mm. All right. Is it, Mama? All right. All right. Um, thank you for your public comment. Next on the agenda is general announcements. Do anybody have any general announcements? Um, yes, ma'am. All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, I hear a lot of the outrage, and I think a lot of it is just around um, having a space that can accommodate. And I'm concerned also that there may be some violations of the Open Meetings Act because we need to have a space when we know that there's uh, this many people. Um, as such, I'm going to make a motion that we postpone this meeting and continue the agenda to Monday, April 8th, a week from today at 6. Watch how she responds to him when he asks to postpone the meeting and to continue it another day. 6.30, Dalton Park District, 14700 Evers. So that is my motion. Um, trustee, second. we are not postponing a meeting. We are Did you here. Get my second clerk? And basically, we have two items on the agenda. So we can basically we continue with her meeting and get through the two items that's on the meeting. So my advice to the board is we are already here. Let's handle the business and not let the business handle you guys. We're not having no meeting at no I Dalton Park District. So I'm just making that crystal around. clear. Cl clerk, what are you doing? You out of order. You out of order. Did I call the road? Did I say call the road? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, Clerk Key. You out of order, Clerk Key. Like, stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. So, as I was stating, hold on, hold on, hold on. Continue with the business. Yo, she is giving them fever. She she makes it clear that they don't run nothing. She run it. Yo, I've, I've never seen somebody so arrogant like this. When I tell you this mayor is going viral, like people in different countries is talking about her. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run at no Aye. Dalton Park District. So I'm just Trust making that crystal around. clear. Cl clerk, what are you doing? You out of order. You out of order. Did I call the road? Did I say call the road? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, Clerk Key. You out of order, Clerk Key. Like, stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. So, as I was stating, we need to continue with the business. We are here. People came to a meeting to hear we have been doing in our village. Wait, I need that one more time. Lawyer, I need that one. But no meeting at no I need that one more time. District. I need so I'm one just making that crystal clear. Clerk, clerk, what are you doing? You out of order. You out of order. Did I call the road? Did I say call the road? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, clerk key. You out of order, clerk key. Like stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. So as I was stating. We need to continue with the business. We are here. People came to a meeting to hear what we have been doing in our village. The department head, the lawyer, everyone's I'm call here. The vote. So I'm asking for you guys to Hi. sit Tammy here Brown. and to deal with what's going on. Trustee Tammy and Brown. that's the problem that we have. Now, Trustee wonder why we House. have this function. This is the reason. So Trustee if y'all walk out, y'all walk out. We got business to have. At okay. All right. So go part. ahead. Go ahead. Handle your business, and we gonna handle ours. And the residents is mad because the residents are mad because she has their town in a seven million dollar deficit, like with a budget. She she's saying that it's not true, but based on accounting, it's like she always has an answer for everything. Like I really hate to like speak this way about a black woman. It's like I find this funny because I'm silly. But I find her attitude and approach funny, but it's really wrong. Like you come on, like it's one thing to be in power, but rock your position right. It's like you know that they already got you under the magnifying glass. They got her. She spent twenty four thousand dollars on restaurants in twenty twenty three, spending money on hair. She she wasn't accounting for the money that she took out and donated to her to her foundation. It's just a lot. Let y'all out. It's a Power to the people. Power to the president. They don't want nothing. I can't, I can't. I can't.
Well, the meeting was adjourned because we have to have enough space. So we have to, the Open Meetings Act requires that the uh, that we have enough space for everybody to get in. Uh, because of that, I feel we have a lot of outrage going on out there, and we want to be able to provide the space to people that they are looking for. Uh, Monday, May 8th. Monday, May 8th? Monday, I'm sorry, Monday, April 8th, 6.30 p.m., Dalton Park District. Yes. Um, well, we're trying to listen to the outcries of residents, and I think it's very disappointing. Yes. Everyone's frustrated at the moment. You're violating the ordinances. You're violating the residents' rights. They deserve this is their house. This is the residents' home. And anytime you can't come in, it's a Is that the end? Yeah, I think that's the end. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all because I just felt like that was just crazy. Like, hold on a second. What happened to my camera? All right. So this is a dystopian. Southside Chicago food, equal fish and chips. We need better. Yeah. Taxpayers are paying for her wigs. Exactly. All types of trips for wigs and like unaccounted money. She bought like, yo, she spent so much money. Um, but the the biggest things is that it's some it's some uh charges or people are saying that's you know, accusing certain people of offenses as being swept under the rug. And you would expect, like, you know, for a woman to take something like that more seriously. That's why that one lady was like, Man, you need to just step down. Like, I thought that that was so funny. She said that to her because I've watched another interview where she went into full detail and was saying, like, you know, based on what she did, I wish I could have found that clip, but oh well, I ain't gonna spend that much more time on it. I just wanted to share that with y'all so you could see, you know, look her up. Her name is, uh, her name is Tiffany, Tiffany Henyer. And when I tell you, she's going viral on TikTok everywhere. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big thing. I also wanted to share this with y'all too. I don't know if you've seen this. So, this woman was arrested after a three-year-old was found with the with two kilos of cocaine in the backpack during the home raid. So give me a second, matter of fact. Shit, why did I do that? Hold on. Give me a second. Let me bring this up really quick for y'all so y'all can see it. So this woman right here. Yeah, that's you can see it. So woman arrested after a three-year-old was found with two kilos of cocaine in a backpack. Hold on, let me turn on my monetization. I'm bugging. I don't know why I didn't do that. Let me go right to my live. I'm supposed to do that before the live start. If y'all see, I ain't put a thumbnail on it. Like, I don't know. I'll, I'll be getting so tired of the rat race of doing thumbnails. I might add it to it later, but I really want to chop this video up anyway. So that's what I really want to do. So, yeah. Let me just get that ready. Make sure it's on. Okay, cool. So, this woman right here, um, so woman arrested after three-year-old was found with two kilos of cocaine in a backpack during a home raid. So I'll actually have the video for this. Let me bring this up over here. Bring this story back to your attention. A mobile woman pleading not guilty today to drug charges. During a search of her home, investigators say Tierra Hill's three-year-old was found wearing a backpack that had about two kilograms of cocaine inside. Fox's Brandon Kirby was at today's arraignment and has the story. In a case that's drawn headlines across the country, Mobile resident Tierra Hill is charged with cocaine trafficking and child endangerment. The Mobile County Sheriff's Office alleges that she had a handgun and a kilo and a half of cocaine during a traffic stop on Saturday and more guns and cocaine in her home. Total street value, about $450,000, <laughs> according to investigators. I know whoever she's dealing with or got caught up with, I know they mad right now. And using your baby as a mule, that is crazy. 
Defense attorney John Bruckowitz says it's early in the case, but he questions the basis for the traffic stop. That's going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue as to why they would have stopped her as she was driving a vehicle uh, in Midtown Mobile. They had indicated to her that they that she had uh, a tent, tenant window issue, and we dispute that. So we'll see. Investigators got a tip from a reliable source that there were drugs in the house. The sheriff says deputies followed Hill from her home on Harvey Court near Hank Aaron Park and pulled her over on Crenshaw Street on Saturday. We had information that you know she was you know distributing drugs, so you know there's a combination of events that occurred, and you know regarding the backpack that was discovered pursuant to a search warrant, you know which was signed by a judge to be able to enter the home. Brockowitz says that evidence will become clear at a hearing scheduled for May 20th. She's presumed innocent, she's pled not guilty, and we're waiting on a preliminary hearing. And that, of course, was our Brendan Kirby reporting. Brendan tells us Hill is out on bond and remains under electronic monitoring. Uh, her lawyer said she's doing well with that. He also says all four of her children have been removed from the home. There will be a hearing set in Mobile County Juvenile Court on that. That's, oh, shut up. So that's just crazy to me. Like, yo, when I tell you, I, people need to, I don't know if it's even a test. And if you look at her, she look a little nutty. Like, yo, come on. Your three-year-old had cocaine in the backpack. So this was in Mobile, Mo, Mobile Alabama. Like, what, what, like, yo, she had $400,000 worth of product. So during the time of the search, no adult was present. Four children ages 3, 8, 10, and 15 were found at home. Um, Tierra was charged with trafficking trafficking cocaine, second-degree possession of marijuana, tampering with physical evidence, and four counts of chemical endangerment to a child. Do you know what that would have did to a child? Like, yo, that would have sent the child into convulsions. Like, I don't know. People don't be, but if you look at her, you could tell that she's up to something. Like she, she up to something because why would you do that to, to, to children? That is weird to me. But you know what? People do that with, like with kids with keep, cause you know, this, this wasn't the first story where I heard of somebody doing this with a child, um, with them putting product in the child's book bag. And I, I think something bad happened to a kid like that in a situation like that too. So I don't know. I just feel like that's wrong. Why would you put a child in a predicament like that? Like with, with, with drugs. That's weird to me. So let me read some of the comments before I move on from this one. Give me a second. Why these mugshots look like Netflix thumbnails? Tyler Perry wigs, right? Risky. They told her, um, but that's crazy M mulling your, your baby. Right, right. Well, all of that below, I'm surprised her not. Yo, her nostrils do kind of look, but I, I didn't want to be like judgmental, but it do look like she sniffed something because her nose look really, let me just bring this so you can see it. Like it do look like she do something going on with that nose. That nose look a little Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer-ish. She got to be on something to do that to a baby like that. She has to be. You got to be on something to do that to a child. So listen, these kids, they need better parents. And this is why, like, I understand when we was younger, People used to always be like, I blame the parents. I do blame the parents because sometimes these kids, these parents don't be deserving these kids. And then you just you, you bring them up in a life full of fucking trauma and drama. And then when they get older, you trying to figure out why they can't, why they won't change or why they so dysfunctional. Because look at their mama, trauma and drama from their mama. And then the daddy ain't around nowhere. Unfortunately, it just be it's messed up. So. Yeah, I want to know what y'all think about that, though. Like, why would you use your child as a mule? And uh, that throws me for a loop. So anyway, let's move right on. So I want to know what y'all feel about this J. Cole uh, responding to, to, to Kendrick Lamar. First thing first, I want to say this. Last week, everybody was saying like, oh, I, when is Drake, when is Drake going to respond when is Kendrick Lamar? I don't. Not really that much people was talking about Kendrick Lamar responding to Drake, but a lot of people was wait. Not a lot of people was was talking about J Cole responding to Kendrick, but people wanted Drake to respond. And I know that we in the internet and shit happens so quick, so quick. But you have to remember that Drake they dissed him first. Like you know, this was a response. So you looking for a back and forth off of that was the response. But my whole thing is with this right. Now, I like J. Cole, and I, and I clearly said last week that I felt as though 
I relate to J. Cole more lyrically than Kendrick Lamar. Um, with this response, I more so was, if, if somebody did respond, I was waiting for Drake to respond because I felt like the dish was more aimed towards him. But I have to say this though, lyrically, was this this good from J. Cole? It was good, but I didn't feel like he came with that energy like Kendrick. Like, I don't know. It, it, it was just a, just a little, and I know that people might disagree with me, but I felt like the J. Cole seven minute drill, it was just a little mid, just a little bit. I don't know. It was too relaxed. So yeah, so J. Cole seemingly blasts Kendrick Lamar with explosive seven minute drill track in response to like that diss, which is number one. And, and it's aiming to go number one uh, next week as well on um the billboard hot 100 so j cole dropped the 12 and you know what he said that he was dropping a project too so j cole surprise dropped the 12 track new project titled might delete later and the tape's last track includes what appears to be a fiery response to kendrick lamar's much discussed verse on metro boomers and futures we don't trust you like that cut like that so j cole on seven minute drill your first your first was a classic your last shit was tragic your second shit put you to sleep but they gassed it all right so j cole surprises with new might delete later i want to know what you what y'all felt about that like did you like the track be completely honest so like that song k dot rap yeah get up with me f sneak this in first person shooter i hope come on why you why you first person shooter i hope they came with three switches taking aim at both drake and cole and referencing the duo's 2023 song which featured on the on the canadian artist eighth studio album off for the dogs so kendrick continues so we already know what kendrick said but that came out last week it's number one so while it certainly can be co coincidental it's interesting to note that kendrick's top dog entertainment label may add souls featured on cole's new project cameron gucci main uh bass ari lennox young dro central c and daylight are also featured on might delete later ain't it crazy it's like i don't know i feel like why did i feel like j cole had music to release right he was he was ready to go he probably just added this at the end but i would have liked to hear from drake first in my opinion i would have liked to hear from drake because i didn't feel like let me know in the chat or in the comments if you felt as though that this this was geared towards like i, I would have liked to hear from drake if anything even though this was a response to drake but i don't know i just felt like j cole just hopped out there because you know he got a project he's pushing a project like I said, J. Cole, I like him more than Kendrick Lamar. I know when I said that in one of my videos, a lot of people commented on the video and they were saying how they was more Kendrick fans. There's a lot of Kendrick Lamar fans who commented under my video that I did on the on Kendrick dissing uh, Drake and J. Cole. But I personally just connect more with J. Cole. But I did feel like this uh, seven minute drill was just a little mid, in my opinion. So in any case, Kendrick's verse definitely seemed to... Um, get Jermaine's attention. Although he didn't name any names, the Fayetteville, North Carolina MC appeared to fire back by taking aim in the Compton's rapper's discography and representing the reluctant New Jack City meme. So he said, he's still doing shows, but fell off like the Simpsons. Your first was classic. Your last was tragic. Your second should put niggas to sleep. They gassed it. Your third was massive and they, and that was your prime. I was trailing right behind I was trailing right behind and I just now hit mine. Now I'm front of the line with the comfortable lead. How ironic soon as I, I go, soon, how ironic soon as I go at it, he wants something with me. But see, I don't know. I don't feel like, I don't feel like Kendrick really wanted with J. Cole like that. Everybody said that too. All right, so he wanted with me. Well, he caught me at the perfect time, jump up and see. Boy, I got off bars, not no controversy. Funny thing about it, Bitch, I don't even want the prestige. F the Grammys, cause I'm, ooh, the, them crackers ain't done nothing for me. So let's took my, and you know what? It'll be it'll be white content create creators who will be, ooh, I can't wait. Should I react to that in this video so I could? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I just need to find the audio. So how ironic! Soon as I got um got it, no no no, I already passed that prestige. He said F the the crackers. So let's took my soul, niggas soul. So drugs took another took another one. The rap beef ain't realer than the ish I seen in Cumberland. He averaged one hard verse like every 30 months or something. If he was dissing, then we would be discuss if he was if he wasn't dissing, we wouldn't be discussing, huh? Lord, make me have to smoke this because I 
F with him. But push come to shove on this mic, I will humble him. I'm mean with this thing that New Jack City mean. So he's saying that he gonna humble, he gonna humble Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is a lyrical beast, though. You know, I'm not just gonna like make it seem like he don't got it. I to be honest, I like like that a little. Maybe I need to listen. Maybe I need to spin the block and listen to this again because I said that earlier. But when I when I first heard it, I was I wasn't really like so by it. I gotta listen to it again though. So that's that on the article. Four albums in twelve years, nigga. I can I can divide. So yeah, let me know what did y'all think. Towards the end of the track, Cole declares the song's purpose is merely a warning shot to back niggas down. Take a listen to Seven Minute Drill with produced by T Minus and Conductor Williams below. I want to know what did y'all think about this track? Like, did you like it? Did you feel like he got at Kendrick Lamar? Did you feel like he ripped it? Compared to the 90s beef, this is too soft. I want them to go hard, hard go, go for the juggler. Let's see. They're going to remind Drake he has no street credibility. So you're saying, Erica, that's your opinion. Let's see. Kendrick verse was fire too, though. Um, Chanel, I don't think Drake is using him yet. Kendrick was his pawn for Drake to come out. Hmm. Kendrick was shooting strays too, though. It ain't none but two people on the first person shooter. Erica Drake isn't there lyrically. That's definitely a lie. Oh, you know what? Let me just see something real quick. Hold on a second, because I want to make sure I can find this. But listen, maybe what I'm going to do is when I get off a of line, I'm definitely going to play that again. Um, I'm going to play it again and just see how it feels. But Based on first lift, listen of like that, and then um, seven minute drill, I felt like sometimes J Cole his him being so laid back it loses me sometimes. Like a certain song, I like that. I like energy in my lyricism, but I'm not saying that it's whack because I just like a little bit more energy. But let me just see. Mm. I want to just see some. All right. Thumbs up the video if you hear. I know it's a little late. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Uh, I can't find nothing on it. Mm, whatever. So anyway, yeah, I just want your feedback on that. Let me know what you think about uh, that disc record. Did you feel, do you feel as though that seven minute drill was all that? Or do you feel like Kendrick came harder? I felt personally... Kendra came harder, but if I have a different opinion tomorrow, then I will, um, I'll update and say that. But as of right now, I thought that it was mid, to be honest with you. So anyway, where do I want to go now? Give me a second. Um, I already did that. I'm trying to make sure I close my windows in the background. So I already touched on that. Listen. Wait, did I? Oh, I stopped sharing my screen. I want to bring this up really quick. I don't know why that happened. Kendrick was fire, right? I don't know why that happened. Let me know if you hear me now. I don't know why that happened. So, um, oh, let me go over here real quick while I've got this up. One second. So listen, so they saying that Cassie is supposed to be cooperating with the feds in the investigation against Diddy. I mean, I seen this coming. Why wouldn't she? Do you know if she's 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 the first one who shook the table? Of course they're gonna come at her and they want details. Of course. Come on. Like, so um, I had the TMZ article, but did I delete? Did I take that down? Yeah, I think I clipped that off. 
So, all right. So Cassie is reportedly cooperating with the feds in um, an investigation against Diddy. So according to TMZ, Cassie is cooperating with the federal investigation against Diddy, along with other individuals that sue him. The outlet says that Cassie has been in talks with the feds for several weeks and that she is and that the timing would place Cassie's conversations with them before the raids on Diddy's home. Yo, Cassie better be protected. She needs to be reclusive, basically, because. I don't trust people who like somebody like Diddy. I feel like, you know, especially if he could find out where she's at. I don't know. I just feel like he would try to get her touched. Like, you got to be careful out here moving like that. You got to be careful. So notice that they said that. They said Cassie's conversations. Wait, the outlet says that Cassie has been in talks with the feds for several weeks and that the timing would place Cassie's conversations with them before the raids on Diddy's home. Now, if you're trying to protect the victim or if you're trying to protect the person involved, why would you even advise that? Why would you say that? So as previously reported, Cassie filed a lawsuit against Diddy back in November where she accused him of capital R word and abuse. The suit was later settled, but um, with unpublicized terms. Yeah, because he wanted to hide the devilish. He wanted to hide the devilish ways. So, give me a second. That's just crazy. I don't think that they should have put that out, though. Let me know what you think about that. Do you think that they should have? You think they should have advised that, like, oh, she was cooperating weeks before the raid. That's gonna put a rage in Diddy. He's gonna be mad at her. I'm telling you. I mean, it's nothing that she can really. It's not. It's it's over between them now right um party party and diddy's jaw and did you see how hard stevie j was going for diddy yo the way stevie j like yo so they were saying that diddy has recordings of um allegedly he has recordings of different guys that you know politicians artists and stuff like that that he allegedly was getting it on with right and they said that he has them recorded in case they they want to come out or and it just i don't know like a blackmail situation right so my whole thing is Stevie J, the way that he ride. Now, I'm not trying to say Stevie. I don't even know the shit. We, the, the average person who works like us, like regular jobs, we might have more money and happiness than the Stevie J. I don't know. I get flunky behavior when I see Stevie J around Diddy. Like, yeah, I'm your bottom bitch. I'm not going nowhere. I'll be around. Uh, what's that? I'll be there. Just call my name and I'll be there. Yeah, that's the type of vibe that I get from Stevie J, where it's just like he's trying to hold Diddy down because he know he got money. He probably can sniff whatever. Listen, look at Stevie J face. In my opinion, he does sniff something. He does. He got that look. He got that base head look. In my opinion, this is my opinion. He got a certain look to him. I don't know. I feel like this. And let me know if you could relate to this. When you're from the hood, you can tell when people use drugs. I can tell. There's certain little indicators, like it's the way that your face looks. And if you if you're an alcoholic, you're, you look bloated all the time. If you do certain types of drugs, your teeth will look bad. Like, I don't know. It's, it's just a certain it's a certain look that and Stevie J got that look, too. Then he was with Faith. And you know that she had admitted to, I believe, to doing the C.O.C.K. as well. I wonder if any every Hollywood party is recorded for blackmail. Yeah. Stevie J is on some shit and see, and, he, and I feel like. He's going to be supportive of Diddy. Like, I don't care. Stevie J gave me that energy that he'd be like, Puff, I don't care what you did. I don't even care if you did it. I'm, I'm going to hold you down always. So, yeah, we'll see. We're going to see what's going to happen with that. So, listen, let's move right on. So, Megan Thee Stallion, the one that sipped that Don Julio by the gallon. She be chilling out in Calabasas with them bastards. She got her bachelor's. Now she's trying to get her master's. Then they said that Kelly Kelsey did the classes. So, Megan, I wanted to just play this real quick, right? So she's sitting up here. She's teasing this album. And, you know, Megan is supposed to be going on tour. They said that she sold out Madison Square Garden. I don't believe a word of it. And people were saying that she's going to be performing at the theater at Madison Square Garden. That's actually a 5,000 5, capacity. Now, I thought to myself, can Megan the Stallion? do I think 5,000 people? 5,000 people. Do you think Megan could sell out 5,000? I think that's feasible, um, but 20,000, the venue, I'm talking about like, not even being funny, but like you've seen the venues when Nikki performs, like, I don't think she can do that. So anyway, that's aside from this, Megan is talking about that, whether, you know, how many songs she's going to put in her album, that she's going to do twerk music or whatever, and that her album is almost done. In my mind, like Megan, she has, she's a dreamer, right? 
So Megan, in her mind, she's just like, I'm a bad bitch. She wants to come out and drop her album before she goes on tour, even though we know it's not going to perform like, you know, it's not going to do that much. I want to actually go to iTunes right now and see if people is buying Doja Cat's album. Give me a second. We pause on Megan Thee Stallion before I play this video. Let me go to iTunes and see what's going on with Scarlett, too. I see Beyonce is number two. Who's number one? The Black Keys. Let's see if let's see if Doja Cat's Scarlet 2 entered the top 20. She's not even in the top 20. In top 40, top 50. Something is up with that. Even Shakira's number 75. Let me just let me just refresh this. Sometimes you gotta take your iTunes and you just gotta refresh it just to make sure you're getting the most accurate information. Let me refresh it. She just came out with a new video, new song. I hope she has, I hope that her album is in. Hold on. I don't know if you could see this though. Give me a second. I don't think you'll be able to see it. Probably because the light, you'll be able to see it if you, no, you can't see it. Doja Cat's album is nowhere to be found. This was inappropriate that I was talking about Megan and I did that. See, I'm not perfect. I still got a fine tune, but I just thought about that in the moment. Like, she just came out with an album. I see Shakira at number 75. I see Renaissance. Doja Cat. She's at number 118. I don't know if you can see that. No, the light is too, the light is too much. Doja Cat Scarlet 2 is at number 118. She don't got no fans like that. They streamers. They streamers. And Doja, oh, let me wait till I get on that. So let's play this Megan Thee Stallion clip where she's talking about how many songs she's gonna come out with her album. She's so delusional. Let's just go. It's acceptable. Like how many songs do y'all feel like y'all want to see how many songs y'all want to hear on this album because in my mind i was thinking 14 but i keep recording songs that's so good like i'll be in one mood one week and i'll be in another mood the next week like i was like damn i need to wrap my ass off so like the first 20 songs i had i'm just straight rapping like it's just rap and then i start being in a better mood i was like Feel good songs, and then I got in a ratchet mood because you know it's about to be summertime. We about to be outside, so then I still popped that. She's a dreamer. That's music, and I just remember how y'all used to really whack me for making pop that ass music. So I just really wanted to get on y'all ass and show y'all how bad I could rap. So I really kind of like haven't been in touch with my roots. So I'm trying to see if y'all trying to pop that ass. If y'all trying to, what is giving like? What is given? How many songs should be on the album? And you don't got to worry about the rap, 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 rap. And I'm going to do that anyways. But I'm just trying to figure out. Because if it was me listening to an album, baby, put me 12 songs on the album. Cause then drop what you're going to drop. I mean, don't you have the independent deal that you bragged about? Drop what you're going to drop. You want 12 songs? You want 14 songs? You want... Drop what you're going to drop. Stop asking the, the people questions. Like, you're going to do what you're going to do anyway. It's like, she just wanted to come online just to say something. She just wanted to have some sort of a conversation and be like, how many songs did I put out? Should I put... Megan, just stop. Just drop what you're going to drop so, you know, so you can go and fill up them 12,000 capacities. Yo, actually, let me do this right now. Megan the Stallion tour. Let me see if I can find this on Twitter real quick. Because I'm telling you, when they had like the Nikki capacity, her capacity was 20,000. And I'm telling you, when I seen Nikki performing on um, Megan, when I seen Nikki performing on tour tonight in Brooklyn, you could clearly see when Monica was on stage that they even sold tickets in the part where your 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 view would be obstructed by the stage, where it's like you're performing, you're literally standing behind Nikki. That shit was full. Megan can't do that. I'm not trying to talk down on a black woman because I want her to be successful. Yeah, you should be, but I don't. I can. See, she didn't put the work in. 
She ain't put the work in. She ain't put the work in. I want to see if I can find the percentage. Mm. They so delusional. Let me see something. Megan's store sold. She sold. So look at this. This is a telltale sign, baby. Don't Nikki have like 800,000? Like, don't quote me on it. How many numbers uh, Nicki Minaj tour? See, I never lie, sweetheart. You see this? They cutting down the venue for her. And I still don't. And look at all of this. And all of those tickets is going to be resale. All of them. 12,000 capacity. They cut down the half of the arena. Hard Rock Live, 5,800. Wow. So you mean to tell me that she has 5,800... You mean to tell me that she has 5,800 tickets for one venue to Hard Rock Live in Hollywood and she still has 1,500 left? That's California. They don't want to sell that out? Austin is 11,000 people. She has 84 tickets left. American Airlines in Dallas. She has 162 tickets left out of 13,000. Nah. Tickets available. Tickets sold. Let's see something real quick. Yeah. These are all scalper tickets. How they cut the they cut the venue down to me, right? If you want to maximize off of a venue, so it's like she's losing money off this, if you want to be honest with me, because your set is either gonna look like shit. It ain't gonna look nothing like that damn um that Pink Friday 2 set. We already know that. They don't got the budget on something like that. She's going to have... She, listen, we'll see what she has, but I knew it. And I told y'all, when we look at them crowds, they're going to be empty. They're going to be empty. They're going to be empty to the point that they're going to be doing what they did for Doja Cat when they brung... Listen, I told you, I love when news just falls on my lap. My coworker came to me and she was just like, yeah, I went to Doja Cat last night. I love when they just spill and they just don't know what I do. I went to Doja Cat last night and they brung us in closer because it wasn't that much people there. I said, thank you for telling me that. Yep. And that's what this looks like. 13,000. I can guarantee you that most of them see people, the scalpers buy Nikki tickets because they know that people want them and they want to go to the show. The scalper bought these tickets too. Come on, Minneapolis. She got she sold is twelve thousand capacity. So it looked like they kept her capacity about about twelve thirteen thousand thirteen five for certain places in Detroit. They gave her thirteen five. Atlanta. They only gave you twelve thousand. Hold on. This this has me interested. I want to look something else up. Wait, can you, I think I am on that? All right. So you do see that on the other side. Let me look up. I want to look up Nicki Minaj tour. I want to see how many tickets. So Megan Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj tour. Because they love to throw this tour word around and um, you know that you're not on the same level. You know that you're not. They just want her to seem like she's doing the same thing. It's like, stop it. See, Nicki, they, so many people talk about the tour, baby. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you, show you real spill. So many people, well, I know that Megan's tour didn't stop start yet, but it's like, you see how easy it was for me to find this? Oh, God. It's immediately over here. As soon as I put Nikki tour in, it's so much. It's like, I can't even find it. It's so much footage, like, so much quality. You can't even find the people talking about that. Where is that page that, do, that does those uploads, though? Bobby Shmurda was at the show last night. Um, Nicki Minaj tour. Let me put the percentage sign in there and see if I find it off of that. She got that water. She got that water. Let me see if I find anything. Nicki Minaj tour tickets. Um, wait, let me see what they put in Megan's tour. Let me put it. Nicki Minaj tour sold. Let 
It's so much. Oh, Joe Budden was there last night. Sold out. Come on. She, come on. Nikki's selling out 20,000 capacity. Keep that little 12,000 that the scalpers bought. Keep it. They, they selling out snack size venues. <laughs> if they really selling it out. Snack size, shoebox, mini mall. Mini mall. You ever been to a mini mall when you drive up and it's just like a woo? Just a little in and out. Ross, Petco, Target, mini mall. Mini mall. Not the Galleria. Mini mall. Strip, strip, strip mall. I can't find it. And you know that somebody, let me look up Stats Minaj. Okay, yeah. See, I was thinking of them too. See, he just fell into my lap. Let me see if I can find anything on Stats Minaj. Little Nas X was at Nikki's show. I am such a giant. Come on. You know that they, the stallion could never do that. I ain't trying to be funny. She could not. You see the people up on every level, every level around the stage where they, they like, I'm going to buy a ticket around the stage. I don't even care if I don't see her face. I just want to be there. They would not do that for Megan. Come on. Let's keep it a stack. They would not do that. The, you know, I've been to a few shows that was like that. Diddy's show was like when Puffy Puff Daddy No Way Out with Foxy Brown, Little Kim, and all of them, Mace um, Locks, all of them performed back in the day. That tour was like that. People was everywhere. Like I remember, I remember being outside, and they was like, "We could sell you a ticket, but you might not be able to see the stage. Your your view will be obstructed." And that's what they mean, like that. Like you'll be standing on some like that. Megan ain't no damn tyrant. I am such a Come on, I know they be posting about the tour. Nicki Minaj has her 18th sold out show from Pink Friday too. Megan need to be singing this time, won't you save me? Yeah, she need to be singing that. Megan want to sing Brooklyn, Won't You Save Me So Bad? I don't, I, when I find it, I'll, I'll update it. F the club up is 1.1 million falling for you, over 200,000. Everybody is almost platinum. Damn, fuck the club up. Made it to platinum before um, everybody. Let me look up Nicki Minaj tour tickets. And then if we don't get it, then I'm going to move on. Bitches talking about spreading lies about Nicki Minaj tour when their phase of tours was boring. No coverage, constantly downsizing. 20 to 60 dollars tickets, only 30% sold out. And you performing at 16K. It's not even 16K arenas. They performing at 12K. If you're going to pop some shit, say it right. They ain't, we're talking about 12K. Okay, Pink Friday 2 World Update. Um, Prudential Center tickets sold 12960 100% sold out. Let's see, tickets sold. Where is that? Las Vegas 15,000. Hold on, let's go here because I know that Nikki's. I want to see like the percentage where they said like how many tickets she sold totally. Oh, so they don't just post. Damn, they, they don't just post um, tour stuff. Because I know it's it's like you know what I'm talking about. It's like the post like over here where they was like from Megan where they said that she sold two hundred and fifty two thousand. I believe somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Nikki's tour tickets is up like in the in the eight hundred thousands. That's why I'm saying like something is off with that. That's definitely a um that's that's definitely micro. 
But anyway, we'll see what Megan Thee Stallion does when she steps out on tour. We're going to see what the crowd going to look like and all of that. So we'll definitely be talking about that. I can't wait to see what Megan does. You know, I wish her the best. But at the end of the day, I think that they just trying to do that to make it seem like, you know, she's on to something like, oh, Megan is in demand. She dissed Nikki. And, you know, this is supposed to be a great year for her. No, I don't. I don't buy a word of it at all. So anyway, let's move on. I don't spend enough time on that. Let's talk about Glorilla. So Glorilla, she dropped her mixtape tonight, right? And let me bring that closer so you can see it. So I felt like Glorilla was, she played herself by doing this, in my opinion, because, and I'm so tired of this conversation. Let me just say this. You know why I'm tired of people trying to force Nikki and Cardi to be together? Cardi is not a real artist. You as a black woman, and I know you lying and trying to make it seem like you and Cardi is family. Why couldn't you insert yourself into this and say that battery saver is on? Oh, I need to plug my computer up. Shit. So um, why couldn't you say that you wanted to be on a song with Cardi? Hold on a second. Give me a second. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Give me one second. Where the fuck did I put the plug at? I could have swore. Hold on. Nikki never need that girl. Yeah, and I, I just don't like the way that they trying to force it. Wait, my computer is plugged up. Oh, I think I turned my thing off. Hold on. y'all. Why the fuck is that turning on? Give me one second. Let me just plug it into, because that's definitely plugged into my computer. The same plug up. I just don't want my shit to die. That shit still is not. Oh, it's unplugged. I'm about to say, what the hell? The adapter is unplugged. It's cool. All right, cool. We plugged up. All right. My bad. So, all right. So, Glorilla got on, got some stuff off her chest on her new song. Uh, I I just pray that one day bad bitches will come together. Me, JT ain't the best of friends, but we ain't beefing. So, I know that a lot of people were saying that JT and um, Glorilla was beefing. You know, Glorilla made it seem like she smacked her or something like that. I ain't really follow it like that because I don't follow Glorilla. So another thing she said in the song was, I just pray that bad bitches come together because Cardi and Nicki on the track will break some records, right? Why you ain't say you and Nicki on the track will break some records or whatever? Why are you why are you putting Cardi B in a conversation with this? And the thing that just that to me that pisses me off personally, hold on, let me bring this up closer so that you can understand what I'm saying. The thing that pisses me off is like, why do y'all keep trying to push this girl in the in the realm of excellence? It's like, Glorilla, you're a female rapper. You don't have a Nicki Minaj collaboration. She already, she already collaborated with Nicki. You know that they don't get along, right? And if you was really her cousin, you would have known not to even mention that because you know like the, the tension or whatever. I don't know if you just try to like... If you try to like rally up female rap fans to just be like, oh, if Cardi and Nikki, this and that, to me personally, on an ethics level, right? See, I think Nikki, this is my personal opinion. I felt like Nikki has played nice with Cardi on some shit, but if you want me to be raw and be honest, I don't think Nikki really respects her as an artist. She's a human being in this industry who forced herself in, and you want somebody who has a God given talent, who writes their lyrics and really performs and really has a skill to, to, have to reconcile with a person who shouldn't even be here. It just bothers me. It bothers me that people take this much energy and they want Cardi to be in Nikki's face so bad. And people in the comments like, oh, yeah, I want Cardi and Nikki to make up. Oh, I want this, I want that. She ain't even supposed to be here. And that's real talk. I'm tired of it. Why you couldn't put yourself and say, like, I just want, why, why you couldn't say me and Nikki would break some records? Like, you've been, you know, you, you fake got uh, hacked. And you was doing some shady stuff on your page talking about Nikki, you fake got hacked. 
you ain't get hacked. In my opinion, you didn't. So it's like, why do you want Cardi and Nikki so bad? Why do people want that so bad? Put Nikki up with some real talent. Put her up with some real talent who deserve it and really, you know, is trailblazing in their own right. You always want, I hate when people do that. Like, oh, I just want Cardi and Nikki. I just want Cardi and Nikki. I don't. I don't. I didn't even want it with Mortal Sport. And you know how I could tell this though, too? I don't know if Nikki said this verbatim, but Nikki was, remember when Nikki did that interview with, um, what was that guy's name on Apple who she does interviews with? What is his name? And Nikki says something like the way that Cardi disrespected her, she thought about all of the um, other black little girls who would have loved to have been on the song with a Nicki Minaj. And that's facts. Cardi ain't got no respect because she ain't really from this culture. She don't understand all of this rap. And she on her song talking about, ooh, child, cool down. She's a caricature. Talk about, I'm like, ooh, child, cool down. That's not even you. Y'all don't even talk like that. Stop it. Stop it. And then you got Glorilla up here talking about you and you want you want Nikki to be merged with a fraud. You want Nikki to be merged with somebody who's a counterfeit just for the sake of putting her in a conversation. You should have threw yourself in. And I wouldn't have been, I still would have been looking at you sideways if you said Megan, at least Megan has a, a talent. We think she has it. Right. Um, but stop putting Cardi in it. She's not black girl excellence, in my opinion. She's not. There's nothing great about what she does. If Partisan is not writing her rhymes anymore, like, you know, Offset is doing it, in my opinion. There's nothing great about the girl. I just hate when people do that. Now, somebody was like, you know, if they vouch the conversation and they just like, oh, I wish Megan and Cardi, I wish Megan and Nikki didn't beef or whatever, you know, I understand that because it was like, damn, I thought when Megan and Nikki connected, I thought I was like, okay, here you got this new female rapper coming in, you know, she was talking that shit on Nikki's live, talking about she'll go write some ish. And I'm thinking maybe she understands the true values and everything of hip hop, but then Megan move funny. She's fake. So that's the flip side to her. So I would have get it if you was just like, you know, I pray you and Megan squash the beef or something like that on the record. You just did a track with her, but you, you trying to beseech Nikki to get on the track with somebody who's a fraud. No, she don't deserve that. She didn't even deserve motorsport. Nikki and Nikki even said that she got ambushed in doing that collaboration. Stop requesting Cardi. We don't want it. We don't want it. Like, request Nikki to be on a track with somebody who's talented, not with no BS. Like, come on. Anyway, so yeah, I'm off Glorilla. Let's move right on to this. So I know y'all remember yesterday this whole situation with um this whole situation with Ray Monte and Cardi B. So they was on um, Twitter, and I believe that this is the video that got this started. I don't know if he posted this like the day before and Cardi B ended up uh, responding to it. But anyway, let's check this out before. Let's check this out um, before I give my commentary on it. Hold on. As a black person, you got to say that I'm ghetto, but Cardi B, who doesn't look like a visible black woman to me, and this is no shade to you, Cardi B. This is no... And she's racially ambiguous. And even before she got her face done and everything, even with the, and I'm, and I'm, and listen, I say this and I'm not trying to be funny. Shout out to the black women on this platform who opened up my mind and let me be like, oh, this is really true. Cause I can't remember if I heard, I think it might've been a Cynthia G where she said something like, um, and this wasn't pertaining to Cardi B, but it made me think about it. Right. She was saying, like, you know, when certain people date uh, certain white women, it's because those women are the last picking of their community, right? They're the they're the lowest picking, so it's like they only they they're gonna deal with a black guy because the the ones who is really up in their community they don't want them, right? Now, I will admit, and just to give some 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 credit, I do think Cardi B looks a lot more better now since she's you know done whatever surgery she's done to her face and, you know, eye pulling, nose pulling, whatever, right? I feel like she does look better. But the thing about it is you had to make yourself into being this person who you are. And then, you know, certain certain instances, certain instances you look one way, certain instances you look another way. And you want to know how I could tell? And I know y'all might say like, yo, you're crazy. Why would you say that? You want to know how I could tell that Cardi B, even with the way that she apparently wants to appear beautiful, I can tell that she still struggles because when Ice Spice took that picture with her, Ice Spice switched her mood up. Cardi stayed the same way, like, oh, I don't want to move. And I know you might think your, your brain operates crazy. 
why didn't you switch your face up? Like when you, Ice Spice did, she did like two, and we're going to talk about that. But I still find Cardi to just be a little insecure, just based off of all of the little rants that she did online talking about, you know, remember that one she did where she was like, this is me waking up. This It's like, you've tried to prove too much that you're pretty. It's either you're pretty or you're not. And then with Nikki, you know, just saying one thing, like, what's she say? But you are still, wait, after all of that surgery, you are still ugly. All them botch face photos. What? It's like, I believe that Nikki, she be on her Foxy Brown shit. Like when Foxy was on that, um, on that uh, 730 that Nikki did Curious George over and she was like, I might not hurt you, but I could get to get dead inside. Nikki is going to do that because if you're bad and you knew that you grew up being bad, if somebody calls you ugly, you know that you're not and you're not going to have to defend it all the time. Talk about my face and this and people trying to play with me and people do this. Listen, you are what you are like, you know, and I just feel like Cardi is always running away from these things. Like when it comes to her appearance and stuff like that, it's really clear to see if you really are a person who's um, eyes open. Like you can really just it's really clear to see. But anyway, let's continue this audio. Shay, this is just literally a fact. We're speaking on colorism and all those type of things. She is very, very ghetto. She's way ghettoer than me. She's way. And it's forced like, ooh, child, cool down. Too hot, too wild. I'm like, ooh, child, cool. Who you doing that to the signal to black women? The hunter against the greasy with me. She was outside with the damn bloods. And y'all don't say that. She was with the Bloods for affiliation and protection. Starbrim going away for a year. Who she's going to click clinch on to now? Who's she going to clinch on to now since Starbrim is going away for a year? This lady is ghetto. Y'all don't say that. But the way Starbrim is such a booster, she'll probably set her up with a with a puller upper. She is the marketable. It feels like everyone can be ghetto and, and black besides ghetto and black people. And again, no shade to you, Cardi B. I'm just doing a comparison. As a black person, you got to say that I'm ghetto, but Cardi B, who doesn't look like a visible black woman to me, and this is no shade to you, Cardi B. This is no shade. This is just literally a fact. And we're speaking on colorism and but all she, those type of things. But she want to be a black woman like, ooh, child, cool down, too hot, too wild. Like, ooh, down, ooh, child, cool down, too hot. Like, ooh, child, cool down, too hot, too wild. People don't see it. I process data differently in my mind. What are you talking about? I ain't never met none of my, I ain't never met none of, like, no people who I know who are Latina, they don't, they don't talk like that. They have their own way that they talk. Like, ooh, child, cool down. Shut up. So we heard this or whatever, right? She is. I agree. I, I agree fully. I agree. Cardi B gets away with murder. She's able to do certain things um, that black women would never get away with. She gets a certain grace. Oh, that's why I was, because I was thinking as I was talking, like, why did I say that, right? My point of the matter was, is even though Cardi was not the top of the pickings and she's made herself into this quote unquote, decent looking bad bitch or beautiful person, even when she was at the lowest of the of the of of her looks, she still could get away with murder. She still could get away with, with, with certain things. And it's, it is colorism, and she knows that. She knows it, and she rides on it. Like, just the comments that she's made to people in the past, a person of our community would not make comments towards a person like that. They wouldn't. They would not. So, yeah. So let's move on and see what else ensued after this. So Cardi said... Um, hold on. Let me push this over. So Cardi said, it's crazy because when I became famous, people said that I'm ghetto. Talk shit about my accent. Call me dumb because the way I speak, say I got no map, no couth. Who said, no? Who's, who brought up the word couth? She be on it hard. She be on it. Said I got no couth. Talk about my teeth. Talk about my braid. Talk about my two buns. And to this day, no matter what I accomplish, I get still get called a stripper. All this because I'm from the ghetto. People misinterpret me because apparently I'm loud and ghetto to this day. Call me a hood rat and all. Oh, when I sat down with Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, they called me ghetto stripper. Why is it that y'all got to use me to make y'all comparisons? Because y'all don't see the glory, but y'all only see the glory. But when I get dragged 24-7, leave me the F alone and out of bullshit. I'm tired of people using me as their punching bag. Leave me the F alone. It's my off day. 
But if this was Nikki, she would have been telling her, go bring your husband to a park, go do this, go do that, whatever the case may be. Cardi picks and chooses. She picks and chooses. Let's move on. So Raymonte said, girl, why are you getting so mad at the comparison? I'm saying you are successful and reach heights that visibly black people, ghetto people have a harder time reaching, which is a fact. Which is a fact. The fact that, wait, the fact just like you, I'm not saying you don't deserve success or how you act is bad. I'm just saying if someone was my color or darker acts the same way, we will never receive the same awards and accolades that you um or love. You're being very dense, which she is. Sukiyana, Sexy Red, the city girls, the licks go on. Yep, you had major campaigns that, that ghetto black women and men like me will never get. It's deeper than conversation. I'm not trying to offend you at all um, to not think that you have it easier to be seen as marketable because you're lighter is weight. He said, I'm not trying to offend you at all. To not think that you have it easier um, to be seen as marketable because you're lighter is crazy. Yeah, I do agree. Now, <clears throat> I do agree. And I think that it's a part of me, like, you know, when Joe Budden was saying all of those things about when Joe Budden was saying all of those things about um, Sexy Red and Drake supporting her and stuff like that. I do think that Nikki and Drake both treat Sexy Red like their little ghetto sister. And they know that she probably doesn't get looks like that. And I think that's why they boost her up. Because she does deserve it. She does have a family to feed and she does have things to do. So I'm happy that Sexy Red has a Drake collaboration um, and a Nikki, two Nikki collaborations. You know, she deserves it. And people will look at a Sexy Red and don't think that she deserves it. She still deserves it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. People will look at a Cardi B and Cardi's talking about, oh, she got into fashion and she did all of this. But she low key, her undertone doesn't want a black girl like JT in it. JT started to become a, started to become a threat when she started to do all this fashion stuff. And she don't want her in that space. That's the real talk of it all. That's why I told you like the other day when I went live and I said that I personally felt like Joe Budden only made them comments about Sexy Red because he typically dates Latina women. He doesn't really see it for her. He wants to figure out why is Drake around a girl like that? Is that really your type? I know. Is he really attracted to her? Does he really want to be with a girl like that? That's the real talk of it all. He don't think that she deserves it. I don't like when people dance around a punch like prom night. Let's just say what you're really going to say. Like offend if you're going to offend and just say it. You don't think Sexy Red deserves it. But I love the love. I, I appreciate and I like the love that both Drake and Nikki show Sexy Red. Yeah, she deserves it. She deserves a boost because it's going to be 10 times harder than her. Even if her rhymes are basic. I believe that she's writing them. And Cardi, while she gets all of the power from the ball sack of a man, and she want to make it seem like she's this competitive black girl, witty female rapper, which her rhymes are still b b below average to me, um, just to compete, just to hold a handbag, just to be in the same sentence with other people, you will never have it as hard as a, as a, as a black girl. And this is what I said before in my commentary when I said, these little black girls, if they come up and they are inspired by Cardi, they're going to watch her and be like, damn, she came up. She dropped the song. She she went up. Boom, boom, boom. She made it a certain type of way. And when they get in, they're going to realize it wasn't. it's not going to be that easy. They're not going to get the radio play like that and get the push like that because she was a part of a calculated effort, in my opinion. She, they're not going to get this. She's not going to get the same love. They're not going to get the same love that she got and she don't deserve it more than them. So that's why I said it'd be kind of like weird to me, like not weird, but it's kind of like when I'm talking about Megan, I want Megan to do good. Real talk. Even though I know her and Nikki fell out, she's out here and she's trying to get it. And I know that she has some sort of a talent. I feel like she deserves a push like they gave Cardi. But I still do think Megan is fake, though. But I don't wish the worst for her or anything like that. But I don't believe that she sold out these venues. I don't. And I do think that they're on resale sites. And we'll see. I'm going to look at that another day, you know. But anyway, back to this situation. So Cardi said, that's not what you said. You said nobody called me ghetto. And now you're trying to move the goalposts. And people say that to make it try to seem like they on, they on point with the conversation. Shut up. So you know why I'm at where I'm at right now? Because I took all those no's and recognized that I had to change. I had to change the way I talk. You still talk the same way. The, the way I act and the way I respond, how I present myself. You ignore all that and playing the color because you know you don't like me and that's messed up. Let me tell you something. Why do you care about this boy liking you? 
he's another influencer online. He's just another person in the world who don't like you. Why you ain't curse him out? You curse everybody else out. Why you ain't curse him out and call him, what does she call him? Um, Glitter bottom or something like that? Why you care so much about him and you threw shoes at a woman at fashion at fashion week? Was that fashion week or was it Harper's Bazaar fashion show? Yeah, you don't feel any remorse for that? Cardi, I know Starbrim is going away and you're gonna have some time to think on your own without your gangster friend being around. You need to apologize to Nikki. And even if you do it and then you lie to Star Brim and say, oh, she came to me and that's why we spoke. You need to apologize. Whatever lie you got to make up, just like you made that lie up and said that nothing happened that night at the Harper's Bazaar. You know, do whatever you got to do to make yourself sleep better at night. But I do think you need to apologize to Nikki. Why are you giving this boy all of this grace talking about, I wish I would at a grown age, even at the age of 30, 31. You ignore all of that and playing the color card because you don't like me and that's messed up. I don't give a fuck who don't like me. And that's not really that's not really how you give it up. You being fake. You are so fake. You have more grace for black men. But, you know, that's typical coming from a woman like you. You have more grace for black men than black women. How you telling him he don't like you and that's messed up? You Cardi B. Who cares who don't like you? You you trying to play the emotional and you care in this type of messaging. You ain't you think you nickel slick, but I got your penny change. So you don't like me and that's effed up. You using all these other women. Sexy Red is making bangers and on tour with Drake, but you unfollowed her today. And I bet she's gonna win female rapper of the year because why are you worried about what she's gonna win? Keep your eyes on your own paper. You are ready at the BET Awards. Don't worry about it. Why you say that? And then, ugh, okay. She's grinding and working hard and not letting people call her ghetto or distract her because it's authentic. You know, I do think that Cardi acts a certain way and she keeps certain people around her for, for a look. Like, and I know that people be trying to think, I know people, some people may think like, oh, you just be talking shit or whatever the case may be. No, I'm not. Like, the point that I want to make is, is that I think deep about shit that I say. If Cardi was the New York City baddie that she's trying to present herself to be, like the way that she looks now and she has her makeup done and she beat, if she grew up looking like that, I promise you, God strike me down. She would have mad baddie Dominican friends that look just like her. Not saying star brim is ugly, but she wouldn't have no star brims. She would have and listen, black black girls are bad though too, right? I'm not saying that like Starbrim, she's okay or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm trying to say is, is that with the love that I can look in Cardi B and when she's around her her natural surroundings and her family, she loves her culture. But the thing is, she was bottom of the pickings. Like when it comes to to me, based on her looks back then, right? So she, I don't know why, but like she connected with, I don't know, you know what that whole strip club thing. I don't know her whole life, but. Maybe she connected with Star Brim on that strip club tip for protection or whatever. But what I want to say is, is that you never see her at the, she's always at the club with, with, um, she's always at the club with Star Brim. When you see Ice Spice, I see certain regular like Latina women that be with her in certain videos. I'd be like, oh, I've seen her before or whatever, right? i seen her because you look at Ice Spice, she's a, she's a cute girl. So Cardi, she don't got the plethora of daddy Dominican friends and, you know, who had the blowouts and was mad cute and whatever the case may be. I feel like Cardi got in where she could fit in and our community will accept anything. We accept anybody in. We, we you know, I thought about like all of those um, happenings that happen like in churches, people running up in churches and doing us dirty, just people doing us dirty in all types of situations. And I, I understood this at a young age. I never remember, I, I never forget being in elementary school. And I always said that our kind of people, that we were less racist than other races. Like you think about it, if we, if it's all black people in a room and if somebody Hispanic or somebody white comes in, we want them to feel one. It's always somebody that's trying to love on them. Oh, you, you are right. You ate, you did this, you did whatever. We always want people to feel one. We don't always get that all the time. No, we always show love. We always do. But people don't show love back to us, though. They want to use our culture. They want to use our community and the dwellings of it to look hood and say, ooh, child, cool down, too hot, too wow, because they want to signal the plane for the um 
for the black people say be like, oh, she using the lingo. She doing. I see right through it. Nothing gets past me. Nothing. Nothing. So. I can't believe she said it. You don't like me. That's messed up. If this was Cardi from a year ago, she would have been calling him. a. She would have been calling him a glitter bottom and cursing him out and saying how she's going to get somebody on them. And she would have deleted this tweet. So let's move on. He said, who doesn't like you when you're on the timeline saying that you don't want to be. Hold on. Who doesn't like you when you're on the timeline saying you didn't want to be here? I sent you something very heartfelt and we had an amazing exchange and I thought we were good. You think I don't like you because I like another woman and that's not the case at all. This ain't no stand shit. And that's a, that's another problem. Cardi, you want to be in the conversations and the talents of the likes of a Nikki. You will never be Nikki. You're not talented. You're not. You're just another female rapper who's trying to trace the Nikki footsteps and you're trying to be out here trying to spit some weak ass metaphors and punchlines that that rhyme with designers and LV, loose vagina. You're doing this corny little shit that make it seem like, oh, Cardi got bars. Oh, Cardi be spitting too. That's all you're trying to do is just keep up in the black girl's world. That's all you're trying to do. That's not even really you. I don't know. This is why I'm saying like it infuriates me like with and you talk about the gaslighting, the manip the mental manipulation and gymnastics. Like, yeah, I don't like that shit. Like, why are you dwelling around hip hop? You said you in the fashion. Go do that fashion shit. You got some looks. You do. Go over there. Go over there. Like, you don't got to be in this world like that. There's so many people who deserve that push that you got. And you know what's so crazy? Well, I know. I think Doja Cat, she did well on Spotify. She got the streams, right? I know Doja Cat can be shady, but she deserved, she deserved whatever success. And even though she, no, I can't even really say that. Because she be doing some crazy stuff too. Because, yeah, I don't know. There's another woman who, JT, Sexy Red, they deserve that. They deserve that. Cardi B only got awarded that based off of, I believe, uh, colorism had a lot to do with it. So she said, are we on the timeline? She said this to Ray Monte after he said the last statement. Are we on the timeline or on the DMs? We are talking in DMs and now you're back to the timeline. You can't gaslight me and I won't let you confuse people by bringing up things that are irrelevant to the initial discussion. I don't even think Cardi is smart like that, to be honest with you. I don't. Um, to the initial discussion, you may you say people never called me ghetto. I responded showing how I've always been ghetto. And now you're bringing up Stan-ish. It's none of that. I'm just sick of, sick of people being comfortable with race baiting when it comes to me and it's plenty of men you could have compared yourself to um but you got it hmm no i think his point needed to be he had a very poignant point and it needed to be uh expound on so he said you saying i'm using other women when it's me and you wait he's saying he said you're saying i'm using other women when me and you had our talks months ago, you said, why don't I call I Spice a Mexican? You bring her up. You bring up other people, not me. I'm I'm not bringing in any other women in this. I think y'all are great. It wasn't to offend you or hurt you in any shape or form. Same reason you felt comfortable with calling me a Mexican when I'm Dominican and I ask you why you feel comfortable calling me Mexican when Ice and Jarrell, Jerome, Zoe, Zaldana are Dominicans and you don't do that with them. You do it to me because you know that's what people use to hurt me. That shows how much you feel about uh, feel about Mexicans. You must feel like they're at the, at the bottom of the totem pole. You must feel that way. That says a lot. People say a lot without, let me tell you something. I'm so emotionally intelligent. I wouldn't even have delivered that that way because you know, you're supposed to be Cardi B. You have some sort of attention and reach. Why would you want to, to me? I would decipher that message like, so what are you saying about Mexican people? You're doing that to hurt me. How could that hurt you? He didn't misgender you. How did that hurt you? You talk too much. Same way as you use my name in that video, knowing exactly what you're doing. <sighs> he said, well, I was trying, all I was trying to say is that being ghetto or, or getting called ghetto doesn't hinder her, your career. Essence wrote an article and asked why was my viral birthday trip not sponsored by any brands? And y'all said it was because I'm ghetto. 
not marketable. So I'm giving an example of another person who is ghetto and that reached a high level of success. It didn't hinder hinder her. So why should it hinder me? Oh, sorry. So why did it hinder me? That's all. I didn't mean to offend you, get dragged. And I'm tired of you saying that. You said it two times already. This is the third time you've mentioned that in this conversation that you didn't mean to offend. Um, I use her as an example because her ghetto ratchetness is what helped propel her career. It was being called relatable. This is not no stand Twitter ish. This is real life politics within a black community and entertainment industry. I'm confused on why I'm getting so much hate. Here's my advice to you, Ray Monte. It takes time. Right now, I get brand deals for over $5 million for a campaign. I got social media famous in 2014. My first brand deal for Fashion Nova 2016 was $200 a post. You could reach any height, no matter how ghetto or where you come from. Just remember, the key is to be patient and humble and blessed. Shut up. Thank you. Wish we could have started off like this. Appreciate. Yeah, she wanted to. She, Cardi B wanted some sort of moment. That's exactly what she wanted. So then let's check this out real quick language we have different uh, dialects we don't eat the same food we don't eat the same nothing call a niger a nigerian ghanian call ghanian know what you're talking about when you're talking about it ghanian a haitian uh, a, a haitian jamaican call a jamaican a haitian call guy call, call ghanese a trini and you tell me how they're gonna feel you know what i want to say this too before she says uh, before she says it i think that no matter what Cardi B says, when Nikki spilled that tea talking about that dirty Mexican, what and, and saying that dirty Mexican, I think she planted a seed in Cardi's um, mind because Ray Monte didn't. Did he call her? Put me on if I'm wrong or not, because I didn't hear that he called her a dirty Mexican or anything like that. He said that he spoke to her before. Nikki planted that seed and she said that I'm telling you, she be giving it away. She's giving it away. She was just talking about people and say that I had cooth. That's what I'm saying. Remember when Cardi was in the club and she made the DJ turn off? C O G T H says you can't spell it either. Bitches ain't got the. Wait, what? How did that? I'm going to explain why these bitches never see me. I push a magic genie like a genie, like a genie. My body shake like genie, which is teeny booty, dreamy, but it turn them to the title. So we streamy when he leave me. I go hard in the pool. C O U T H says you can't spell it either. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm trying to make sure that I think like fully. Like I've heard people use that word before, but I didn't hear people start using it more until Nikki came out with that remix. I'm gonna be honest with you. People didn't say you had the cool. Language, we have different uh, dialects. We don't eat the same food. We don't eat the same nothing. Call a, Niger a Nigerian Ghanian. Call a Haitian, a, a, a Haitian Jamaican. Call a Jamaican a Haitian. Call a, Ga call, call a Guyanese a Trini. And you told me how they're going to feel. You told me how they're going to feel. And not only do you, and, 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 and stop playing with me because y'all know that I'm not Mexican. And y'all do that shit, y'all do that shit to, to thing, to irritate me. Why would that irritate you? I understand what she's saying where it's like, if you call, cause listen, cause I do know this, this is real, right? I do know that Trinis and Jamaicans, just based off what I know and being in New York, I know that one, they don't like to be called the other. Um, they don't, right? Yeah, cause I have some Trini friends and they have some choice words of how they feel about Jamaica and all of that. I think that a lot of people, but listen, let me just say this too. I think, um, People don't like comparisons at all because even though I live in the South, I don't like to be uh, like not saying that I don't like to be. I let it be known where I'm from is what I'm saying. Right. And I do believe that there are differences from northern Negroes and southern Negroes. It is definitely a difference. People could people tell me that at work all the time, like, you know, you're so assertive, like you're straight to the point or whatever. Like, I feel like that's best for, for me, my character and my personality and how I choose to get work done. But not saying it's not people down here who like that, but what I'm saying is there are differences in, in I believe, like minor differences in character and the ways that you go about things, like even the way that you cook food. I had some of the best food in my life when I moved down here to Texas. I can't lie to you. They cook different. They season their food different down here. So, yeah, there are, you know, so as that relates, 
I guess what I'm trying to say is that I wouldn't want to be like, oh, are you from the South? Like, no, even though I've been here like eight years, no, I'm still from New York. Like, you know, I'm not from, no, I'm not Southern or anything like that. But I understand what she's trying to say, but I feel like she has this nasty tone behind it. Like, ill, I'm not want to be Mexican. Like, ill, like I wouldn't care if somebody thought that I was from the South, but I'm just not though. Like, you know, I'm just proud. Like, I think people are proud no matter where they're from. It's just like, yo, let me tell you something. I know people, my cousin, who she's from the South. I remember she went to New York. She was like, why do, she went to New York City when we went there. She was like, I did not have a good time in New York. She said, no, I don't see why people love it. It's dirty. It's dirty. Like a lot of, and she's like a Southern belle. She's like, yeah, I wasn't really impressed with it. Like, or whatever. Right. So she's a Southern girl. Like a lot of people. And then there's a lot of people who think like, you know, oh, you're going to come here and you're going to be so impressed. Like my cousin, and she got money. She was not impressed by New York. She's like, no, I'd rather go somewhere else. So she loves her little Atlanta life and stuff like that. She's she was not impressed by New York at all. So people like what and people are proud of where they're from. So yeah, let's continue this. And not only do y'all don't call me a Mexican, y'all call me a dirty Mexican. So I who called her a dirty Mexican? Who called her a dirty Mexican? Did somebody call her a dirty Mexican? For y'all do that shit to to thing to irritate me. And not only do y'all don't call me a Mexican, y'all call me a dirty Mexican. So And why when you look in the camera, you don't look straight into the camera? Look into the camera. Of course, I'm gonna defend myself every single day. Do you, and, 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 and stop playing with me because y'all know that I'm not Mexican. And y'all do that shit for y'all do that shit to to thing, to irritate. To thing, to thing. What's to thing? To get it, pantalone. You tell me how they gonna feel. And not only do you and, 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 and stop playing with me because y'all know that I'm not Mexican. And y'all do that shit for y'all do that shit. And I love Mexican food. Shit. I want to go to Papacitos tomorrow. I love Mexican food. Tex-Mex and Mexican food. Like, what's wrong with it? You know, I'm going to just say this because I, I think that this is appropriate. I was avoiding saying it. A lot of my Trinidadian friends, they would make comments like, I'm just going to be honest with you. The Trinis, they they feel like they're better than Jamaicans because they feel like my friend used to like one of my friends used to always be like, yeah, our, our country makes more money. Like, you know, we make more money and, you know, Trinis is just better. Like, you know, that's and I got that from a lot of Trinis. They feel like they're better than Jamaicans. I feel like Cardi B being Dominican um, and white. She's a white Dominican. Um. I feel like she thinks she's better than Mexican people because, you know, Mexicans, they have a lot of like um association with um being poor but so so do dominicans a lot of people have had those type of things attributed to them like being poor or growing up in poverty or you know obviously she grew up in poverty too a lot of us grew up in poverty shit i know i know shit my mother was raising three kids and barely getting any support like shit sometimes she would just be working just to put a roof over our head and to make sure that we ate so i think a lot of us grew up in poverty but I don't think that I'm better than anybody, but I also don't think that I'm less than them either. I don't care. It was times that we didn't have food. It was times that, listen, you couldn't get no money to go to school with. But listen, I was going to dig some change up somewhere in the house, go do some drawers, dig in the couch or something. I was going to find some change somewhere. You know, nowadays, since that we so into debit cards, you can't find no change in no couches now. Everybody got a debit card. I feel sorry for the kids now, but yeah. To, to thing, to irritate me. And not only do y'all don't call me a Mexican, y'all call me a dirty Mexican. So of course I'm let me read the comments in the chat. I want to know who called Cardi B a dirty Mexican. Why does it sound so Nikki related? Like that shit got to her. Are Cardi B and Megan the Stallion on the outs? Not sure why Trini think they better than us. They do. I spoke to several of them and they do think that they better than Jamaican. They do. And maybe it's just a little inside conversation, but yeah. And it was like, our country is richer. Um, Trinidad is nice, but Jamaica is more naturally pretty, to be honest. Megan, exactly. Right. Because who said that? That was just weird to me, like, that she said that. I'm like, damn, Nikki really be on her mind, like, for real. Like, when Nikki planted that seed, that reminded me of one of my friends when she got into it with somebody. And she was just like, yep. She was like, um, Yeah. That nigga tried to play me. That's why when I spoke to that bitch, I planted that seed. So even if she don't take it for now, it's going to be on her mind. That shit is on her mind. You tell me how they're going to feel. 
And not only do y'all and, and 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 stop playing with me, cause y'all know that I'm not Mexican. And not, y'all do that shit for y'all do that shit to to things. Cardi, what's wrong with being Mexican? You could go get some enchiladas, wear it with your Prada, go out to Nevada, go get a little platter. I don't understand what's so. I I feel like she's tone deaf by doing this because I would feel like I'm hurting my Mexican fans by saying something like that. She don't really care. The record is flopping with it ain't giving no Tusa. So she ain't over in Mexico doing those crazy streams. You know, she don't care. She like shit. Our new Spanish song is a flop anyway. So I don't give a shit. To irritate me. And not only do y'all don't call me a Mexican, y'all call me a dirty Mexican. So of course I'm gonna defend myself every single time you guys do it. You're not gonna keep erasing my nationalities. You're not gonna keep erasing who I am. And I first of all, I, I, never in my life growing up did I ever heard anybody call me a fucking Mexican. So it's like how the fuck when, when I was coming up, y'all wasn't calling me that. But now y'all do call me that. So it's that is bothering her. It's bothering her. Listen, I feel bad. Megan is the one who did it. You know, Megan is the one who did it. You know, and I hate that for you. You know, um, wait, where's the other post at that I wanted to bring up? Damn, it's 342. Let me, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. So Ice Spice, Ice Spice chimed into this whole situation um, regarding Ray Monte when, she, when Cardi B brought up her name, right? So I just want to say this. Let me scroll over. So when Cardi said that same reason you felt comfortable calling me Mexican when Ice Spice, Jarrell, um, Jarrell, um, Jerome, Zoe Zaldana are Dominicans and you don't do that to them. So Ice Spice said, no offense, Barty, it's because I am I have a Dominican parent and a black one. And she made sure she put the heart emoji. She's so, mm, let me wait to get my commentary till I get to this picture. So she said, I think there might be some sort of confusion on what I said. I asked why he's so comfortable calling me a Mexican. I had no Mexican fam parent, mama and Timmy. And she came out a whole black woman. My father Dominicano, and I'm Dominican, just like you. I also used use other Dominicans as an example because you should know a lot of times we get clustered into one big because of language. Also, can you send me that pic you took with a camera, Vanity Fair? And then Ice Spice posted it. And so this is where, for me, the conversation begins. So Ice Spice, why didn't you post this photo before? Hmm. Now, I want to say this, because I did a video earlier, but I didn't feel like I delivered it in the right way, so I privated the video because I wanted to come and do this commentary. I don't trust Ice Spice. Ah. I don't trust Ice Spice, but I have a reason why I'm going to say what I'm going to say, right? I remember I was having these conversations with a certain person on the phone and this is how I know, like I do respect people and I do give them grace because I noticed this from when this situation started to happen with, with um, Princess Diana, even before Barbie world, right? I'm one of those people, like I do sit back and it's like, I'm not, not comment on things, but I'm not just going through life and just like, I pay attention to everything that's going on around me, right? I just do. And I noticed that Ice Spice, when she first was like getting on Twitter and like with the whole merge with Nikki, she followed a lot of the only big bar pages. Now, me as a creator, like I'm on Twitter, but I follow a person who got a few followers. I don't care how many tweets you, you how many retweets you get or anything like that. I don't even follow a lot of big, con big um bar pages that they would say, right? I follow smaller people because I feel like, especially on my other page um, that I had, I would retweet people who I felt like they wasn't being seen because I know how that feels like, you know, but with Ice Spice, I noticed that she followed a lot of the key barbs that Nikki would associate with, like a lot of the pages that get a lot of reaction. She followed all of those pages. And to me, I think that that's fake because why are you following all big pages? Because it benefits you because when they, when you like their comments and then they in turn retweet anything that you post, it opens them up. It opens you up to the network of the fans. Like it's very slick to me. Um, yeah. And I noticed that when she first, she follows so many big bar pages. My whole thing is, is that if you had love for Cardi and you took this pic with her, now, I'm not trying to be funny or nothing, right? I don't care for Cardi on an artist level, but she has some sort of pull, right? When was the Vanity Fair 
when was the Vanity Fair um party? That was like two, three weeks ago. Was it like two, three weeks ago? And Cardi B made that statement saying that um she had got into it with somebody. And I personally felt like it was Ice Spice from the jump. I said it in my in my commentary because when when she announced enough, she went online and posted Nikki um fuck the club up link for Spotify. And she said she had to check some. I did think it could have been Sweetie too, but I mentioned Ice Spice. I said that I felt like it was her because it was like, number one, I feel like Cardi feels as though that she could check her because she's younger than her. She probably feel like she has some sort of like um, connection with her because they, they from the Bronx and that Ice Spice kind of owes her something. Let me tell you something. Actions speak louder than words. You can tell when a person is being phony. You know who you follow. You know who the base is, who you have on um, on Twitter. You follow a lot of barbs. You follow a lot of big barbs, right? You didn't post this because you knew how it would come off. You only posted this because she asked for it. And that's wrong to me because you want to know what? If I was Cardi B, I would feel like the ugly duckling. Why you had to ask her to post a picture of you? Why didn't she just post it on herself? Uh, herself? Not saying that she looked ugly there, but what I'm saying is, why are you hiding me? Why are you hiding your, if you have a connection with me? You see Ice Spice in this picture, what I was trying to tell you earlier, she made two different faces and Cardi kept the same pose up. It's like she was scared to change her face. Like, no, I know I look cute like this. Let me keep it the same because if I look this way, I might look another way. Like, let me. She kept that shit literally the same. Ice Spice put her tongue out. She did a regular one, too. Um, so yeah, I don't like, and listen, I've been noticed that. And the person who I spoke to about that, they was like, yeah, they peeped that too. I said, why is she following all big bar pages? Like, that's weird to me. You know, a lot of Ice Spice fans are, are barbs, like, you know, are Nikki fans. A lot of them are. Um, what I will tell you is why I think that she hit it was number one for that reason is because the pandering, that's pandering. That's pandering. Ice Spice does pander to Nikki fans. She does. And then today she just posted something after that just to try to wave the flag and show that she's still this or whatever, right? You want to you want to want me to tell you what I believe happened? So remember I did that that video um a while ago. It's like the same day I did this video was like maybe an hour or so later, Armand did his video. And you know, he has a bigger platform than me. I respect him as a creator. He's invested in his platform or whatever. But I did the video first and I said that there was an issue between Nikki and Ice Spice and people came at me. They said I was starting trouble, whatever the case may be. And the reason why I felt that way is because I just felt the energy switch after Barbie, Barbie, um, Barbie World or whatever. Yeah, Barbie World. I think that's the name of the song, right? Um, so I just felt the energy shift because certain things I was just paying attention to, like it would be the stats of the song, like the song would be number one on pop radio or number one on radio. And I would notice that Nikki would post the stats that she wouldn't tag Ice Spice. It was just like certain energy I was just picking up on. Then when I noticed that Ice Spice was going on tour with Doja Cat, I spoke on that again. I spoke on that as well. And I was saying like, how did Nikki invest in you so much? And you're going on tour with Doja Cat. Doja Cat didn't do anything to support you. Now she might be on this album. She might be on, on um, Ice Spice album in a way to like help her or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, but she didn't, she wasn't, she didn't jump on any of your songs and, and push you up. Nikki gave you your highest charting songs. Right. So in my opinion, I don't know. Sometimes I'll be feeling like I'm more of a realist. Like I'm, I, I try to like, and this is how I work in my friendships too. But I feel like if you looked out for me and you pulled me up, what is so wrong with saying? And I know that Ice Spice, she possibly couldn't, have, she possibly cannot have the the control over this. But I would at least so that Nikki don't feel no type of way. I would have ran it past her like, hey, like I know that you might be going on tour. Doja asked me to go on tour. You know, I would really go love to go on tour with you because you know we work together or whatever. I think that that would that would have been more understandable and it would have been more loyal. But the thing is, these people have no loyalty. They don't have no loyalty. Um, I'm not saying that that didn't happen, but you'll understand as I continue. So she went on tour with Doja, and I was saying this the whole time, even before the VMAs. I said, fuck that. I want Nikki to be selfish. I don't want her to perform with nobody. Nikki did the VMA. She made it all about herself. She performed, you know, her song. She did the big difference. She performed like the, the melody of songs too. 
on the hip hop set. She did Last Time I Saw You. She didn't bring Ice Spice up. Barbie World was still at the top at that point. No, no, not at all. Not at all. So that was that. Nikki, where else did Nikki perform at? I felt like she performed after that too. Well, I know that she did the VMAs. And then this tour stop. She just, she just did New Jersey. She did Madison Square Garden, brought 50 Cent out, brought um, Bobby Schmurda came out or whatever. She did Brooklyn tonight. She ain't bring her out. She not fucking with her. No, you're not going to use me and benefit off of me and get boosted and all of that. And then you're not going to turn around and do the work. Like, nah, to me, that's a leech. You should have, like, I believe that, you know, Ice Spice, yes, yeah, she is a new artist, so she might not have that leverage. But in a way, and then this looks phony. It just looks phony. Why didn't you post that picture of her? If I was Cardi, I wouldn't even have asked her. I would have pressed her in the inbox like, yo, why you ain't post that picture? And she would have just posted it like this. You shouldn't have to ask a person to post a picture of you. That means that they're hiding you. They're hiding you. And she know why she's hiding you. So I think, why, I think the reason why this came together and I think that they had some sort of situation at that event, maybe she said something to Sweetie too. I don't know. I told y'all initially, see, when I did my video about this, I said, I don't think she said nothing to Sweetie because that would make you look pressed as a wife. I think I did my video. I don't even think I put Sweetie in the title. I think I said that Ice Spice was pressed. Don't hold me to it, though. I could have put Sweetie's name in the title. But I believe, because I said, I don't think that she would press Sweetie, because that would make you look pressed as a wife. You were still with Offset. So why would you even address her, right? So yeah, she. I, in my personal opinion, like I said before, Ice Spice got addressed because she was moving oppy. It's like, you know, and why did you have that energy towards Cardi? Like, you felt like you had to go. See, that's this is some Megan Thee Stallion energy almost like like when she got on live with Nikki and talking about I'll go write some shit like whatever why did you feel like you had to overdo that I never feel like I have to overperform with a person to show them how loyal I am either you're going to accept it or you're not but I don't know I'm kind of looking at her sideways I didn't delete her music off my phone or on follow or anything like that but yeah I don't know something is up with that though but yeah I love the fact that Nikki did that yo I know that people are and I even heard her fans saying that they was trying to like corner her when she was in the spaces. They was like, why you ain't perform with Nikki? Because you fake. That's why Nikki ain't pulling none of y'all up no more. And that's why I feel like she's doing that with Sexy Red because Sexy Red deserve it. She's not going to get certain looks like certain people get. That's why Drake is supporting her too. And listen, I don't even know if maybe who knows if, if Sexy Red label or her people could, could be throwing him money to support and give her visibility. But I'm happy that he's doing it. She deserves it. You know, these other girls, they get looks and stuff like that just based off of their color and they get pushed and, you know, pushed through. So, yeah, that's my feelings on this, though. I felt like Cardi forced you out there. And then why didn't you post this photo before? You know, I said this when the, when the Vanity Fair came. I said, why don't they have a photo together? All along, you do have a photo and you didn't post it because you didn't want to be judged by um, Nikki fans. And that, in my opinion, and then you posted a, a photo today talking about you get under pe pe you get under bitches skin like poison ivy. I don't know. It looks opportunistic. It looks like you got what you wanted out of Nikki. I think that Ice Spice does love Nikki, but to me, this it just looks really messy. And it looks like to me, I wouldn't even want to be Cardi in that situation. I would have never asked a person to post a picture of me that they took weeks ago. I would just wonder why you never posted it. So yeah, she was she, Cardi played you. She played you. She played you and you fell right into the trap. I would have just, man, listen, I would have, I would have, I wouldn't have posted that shit. Let me read some of y'all comments before I move on. Let's see. Side chick of rap, but why Cardi taking pics with Spice to begin with? It's always calculated and um cunning. But I think that she did it. I feel like Cardi B did that shit because she probably pressed her around that time. They probably had a conversation. She was like, yo, why are you doing X, Y, Z? Because then Cardi even said something. Remember, I don't know if y'all remember, but in another interview, she was talking about that. She was like, I don't like when people start acting funny with me or whatever the case may be. Because then when I see you, I'm going to address you or whatever. Like, I think she was talking to Ice Spice. Yo, let me tell y'all this. I said that when Ice when Ice Spice posted the F the Club up, when she posted the F the Club up right after enough, Cardi B made her announcement and she went right on Twitter and posted Nikki's link. That's pandering. I don't care what you say. That is pandering. Now, when you put it all into perspective, you're trying to make Cardi mad. Why are you trying to make her mad for? So now I think, so I think things have reached a breaking point. Now she realized Nikki's not messing with her no more. 
um, she reposted something that Ice Spice posted, like supporting the album or something before. Um, but she's not rocking with her no more. And I think now she's like, it's time to move on to Cardi. Maybe they can get a collaboration or something for, you know, business wise. Maybe it'll work out for them. But I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. It's 3.57 and I'm honestly getting tired. All right. So it was a track on Doja Cat's album, uh, her, her, new, her new deluxe, Scarlet 2. And people at first were saying that, you know, was Doja Cat dissing Nicki Minaj? Now, and the lyrics, when I when I first heard the lyrics, I said, she can't be talking to Nikki. And then, you know, Cardi fans was all online and they was like, oh, she gagged Nikki. She did this. And I'm just like, they must be slow because I don't think she's talking to Nikki. How are you telling somebody to go on tour? This is Nikki. Nikki went on tour for album one, album two, album three. Um, Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded, um, Pink Print. And she still did a European tour for and like festivals for Queen. She just didn't touch the United States. She this is her this is her her fifth time like going around the world. So she couldn't be talking to Nikki. So people are saying that okay, Doja Cat appears to this Azalea Banks on a new Scarlet Two Deluxe track. Okay, loser after taking shots at her over the years. I wonder why people came up with this um, analogy. So she said, why the fuck these bitches always coming out the woodwork? Don't know why she mad because the bitch, I ain't do nothing to her. She just out here plotting on my ass. I call her steward. She the lowest. She down and out. I call out. Wait, she's the lowest. She down and out. I'll sue her. Grow the fuck up. Act your age. You're not, um, you act your age. You immature. Maybe one day you'll create some allure. Maybe one day you'll be great and go on tour like me. So I don't know. To be honest with you, Azalea Banks, um, Azalea Banks don't spit a lot of metaphors, but I do like the way that she raps better than Doja Cat. And she has some of the, the same ideas that I have about like people. Doja Cat is that suburb, like I don't connect with a lot of her stuff. So let's just read some of the prior things that she said that I do relate to. I'll say that. So she said, actually, um, <laughs> so she said, actually, I'm the bona fide star. Doja makes music for 10-year-olds and is very um, derivative. Cute girl, but her attempts to be witty East Coast Roman reloaded flows are pitiful and not at least amusing. And yes, she looked terrible before she lost weight. What? But Azalea Banks and Doja are miles and more culturally important than any of these weak-ass white socialites. Let me just tell you this. Doja has been taunted and haunted so much of the Nikki comparisons. Now she's rapping like Kendrick Lamar. Now she's doing tonation like J. Cole and even Big Sean. I hear it all in her. It's like you don't know who to be. So now you're still a nigga's flows. Be you. Now you can't do remote, you can't do Roman reloaded Nikki no more. All of these bitches gonna have me with me. All of them bitches gonna need the ass and titty. You ain't doing that no more. And now you've moved on to this Kendrick Lamar, like you know, J. Cole and Big Sean type of I hear all of that in her lyrics. I'm telling you. Tell me if I'm wrong if you, or correct me in the comments in the live chat or in the comments down below. Do you hear different niggas in her flow? I just hear it. It's just like, who are you? That's that suburb shit when they don't have no culture and they got to pull from the, they got to pull from the ones on ground level. I promise you. It might sound far-fetched to you, but I'm telling you, they get their life off of that. They get their life. They need that ghetto-ness. They need that type of real soul so they can clench onto it and use it. And Roman was that for, for, for Doja Cat earlier on. And she sucked and siphoned off of it until fans called her out or people made certain things. And she's like, oh, they think I'm Nikki M. No, you think you Nikki M. And, you know, that's the reason why I never really connected with Doja Cat because it was a watered down Roman Reloaded. I think I was one of the first people not even trying to like toot my horn, but I said that probably over four years ago. She's a watered down Roman Reloaded. Not interested. Not interested. So she said, this person said, Left out, wasn't it Zoya Banks shaming Doja like a few months back just for her to finally admit now Doja is also? Azalea Banks weighs in on Doja Cat's um, new image and single attention. Doja doesn't have the theater training, authentic hunger needed to seamlessly be the master of the genre she's trying to be. Like she's giving me those weird twigs biracial identity crisis vibes. Damn. More thoughts on Doja Lamar. 
to be fair, Kendrick got some cool hooks and melodies, but I think he's mad overrated and, and extremely complacent. I don't care to argue about ghostwriters because who cares, but nah, Kendrick dead ass um, has white ghostwriters writing about the black struggle and shit. I've heard some featured verses from him that were dope, but he be making that kind of rap music that allows white people to indulge in weird fetishization of the black struggle to patronize and absolve themselves of any real social responsibility because they think being Kendrick, being a Kendrick fan is proof that they are allies. Kendrick is really bugging if he thinks he's fucking with Drake in any day. I LOL so hard at that little sub he threw at Drake and laughed even harder at him thinking he's skilled enough to put his name in the same sentence with Jay. Is this new? Because I felt like, hold on, let me look at her Abby. Oh, that's old. Like, nigga, you're not fucking with Wayne, Drake, Styles P, Jadakiss, Nicki Minaj, Remy Ma, or Azalea Banks. Please sit down and humble. Hmm. So, yeah, that was interesting just to see that, you know, people are saying that she's dissing. Um, how, how was that relevant, though? I don't understand why. They... But Azalea Banks is older. To help. Let me look up Azalea Banks' age. She's born in 1991. Isaiah, they wanted to be Nikki so bad. She's 32. Let me look up Doja Cat's age. How old is Doja Cat? She's 28. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that she was dissing Nikki, or do you feel like because you can't be talking about Nikki going tour? I mean, this is her fifth tour around the world, so now this makes more sense. That's what I'm saying. It didn't make sense before to me. Get off my screen with this dumb shit. Oh, wake this tea up, tea. Let her cook. This is definitely going to be a banger. She will hit it down, I believe. I wonder if Azalea Banks said anything. Hmm, that's interesting. Anyway, it is 4.04. I'm about to get ready for bed. Um, yeah, I'm about to get ready for bed. I wanna be up by 10 o'clock so I could go to the gym. I'm so happy I'm off tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So, Nikki is the queen, ain't no more debate. Give her, give the queen her flowers. Yeah, I really, that really had me sick when people were saying like, um, when, when um, Glorilla talking about Nikki and Cardi need to come together. It's like, why you ain't say nothing about you coming together with um, Nikki? Why you keep trying to force Cardi on her? Like, that's so annoying and she's not talented. That's just like, I don't like that, it's just, match her with something like with somebody who's talented or something like that but you keep wanting the most for this i'm not even gonna go into that i'm not even gonna do it anyway i've been up here for two hours so let me get up off of here so listen y'all have a blessed evening get in the comments let me know what you think make sure you thumbs up the video on the way out why she ain't say it uh before these girls have no rap identity. They just pawns to Nikki versus Cardi were right. Glow get on my nerves, to be honest. Let's see. Glow get on my nerves. Remy and Kim sold out the Barclays in Madison Square Garden. Right. Yeah, right. Oh, all right, y'all. This is your boy, Leron, Potent Pondering. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think about anything that I discussed. I said I was going to chop this up, but I'm not going to chop it up. I don't feel like doing that. Um, I want to do it. I'm going to do a video tomorrow. Let me see if I got any messages. Oh, Nikki is talking about Gag City, Brooklyn. Give me a second. They be some haters. I'm under this battle rap uh, page. They be mad. All right, y'all. You're welcome. I couldn't check the mentions. 
No, I don't want to do it. I don't feel like I transition smoothly enough. That's something that I still need to work on. And so maybe I'll do it and then I'll like cut it up, but I'm definitely not going to do it uh, now. But yeah. So y'all be blessed. This is your boy, LeRon, Potent Ponder. And be blessed, be safe, all of that. And I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. Peace. Well, later on.